Hello, welcome to this module on adapting teaching and learning for deaf and hearing impaired students. I'm Cheryl Livingstone and I'm one of the teachers of the deaf in the sensory and physical support team at Peterborough City Council. This training module very much follows on from the modules on understanding deafness, technology and supporting communication. Although this can be looked at in isolation, it does refer back to aspects covered in the other modules that you may want to look at for a better understanding of why adaptations are needed in the classroom. There are suggested tasks to complete during the video, so you may want a piece of paper and pen handy. You may also want to jot down any specific questions that you have on how this training applies to the child or young person you work with, um, which you can then discuss with that teacher. So, students teacher of the deaf. You can pause the video at any point. The outcomes for the session are to understand why adaptations may be needed to support deaf and hearing impaired students and how they can be achieved easily in the classroom. Every deaf child is different and what might help one child may not be appropriate for another. What strategies are needed depends on many factors and it helps to know as much as possible about the child you are working with. If you've seen the module on understanding deafness, you'll know that there are different degrees and types of hearing loss. What does your student's hearing loss look like? This is something the child's teacher of the deaf can help you understand, but it also doesn't give you the full picture. How does the deaf child communicate with others and how do others communicate with them? Do they use spoken language, signing, pictures and objects, or a combination of different approaches? For whatever mode of communication is used, is that child at an age expected development for their language, both in what they understand and their own expressive language? Does the child wear a form of hearing aid and what does it enable the child to hear? There are many benefits to hearing technology, but they don't restore normal hearing and they also have limitations. These are covered more in the technology module. There are also a range of other factors to consider, such as if the child has any other learning needs or disabilities, what support they have and had in the past from family and outside professionals, and also if they are learning English as an additional language. All children, of course, come with their own personal characteristics and traits. All of these factors impact what support a deaf child will need in the classroom. This training will cover generic strategies that will need adapting to suit the age and needs of the student you are working with, and their teacher of the deaf can help you with this. Where appropriate, the student themselves should be encouraged to identify what strategies work best for them. There are a number of potential impacts of deafness. The most obvious point is that listening to or receiving information is going to be more difficult. If a child or young person is new to wearing their hearing technology, they may also be behind in their listening development. When one of our senses is impaired, it means that we become more reliant on our other senses. For those with a hearing loss, the use of visuals is very important, including seeing someone's face for lip reading and expressions. The increased effort it takes for listening or watching a signer means that deaf students can get tired more easily than other students with normal hearing and this can affect their concentration and attention. With a student need needing to focus on the person speaking or signing, it is difficult for them to be doing something such as note taking at the same time. A lot of learning and understanding around the social aspects of communication comes from picking up on casual listening which deaf students can easily miss out on. Hearing aids do not restore normal hearing and work optimally up to two metres from the speaker in a quiet environment with good acoustics. They need to be managed effectively and checked frequently. I mentioned earlier language development. Deafness can impact on a child's language development, particularly developing a broad vocabulary, their understanding of grammar and abstract language features. Any language delay has been found to impact their access to the curriculum, progress in literacy, social skills and wider well-being. They may have difficulty remembering information, particularly that that is given in large chunks. 
Having a hearing loss can impact a child's understanding of what others might be thinking or feeling, and this links to those missed incidental learning opportunities and language delay. A sense of being different can also lead to low self-esteem and confidence issues. Interaction with friends can be more difficult to manage. Any or a culmination of these issues may lead to mental health difficulties in the future, which Megan talks about more in another module. It is worth remembering that all of these are potential impacts of deafness. They will not affect all children and young people with a hearing loss, and the chances of difficulties are minimised with early and ongoing support. So I just want you to take a moment to think about a deaf student that you work with or are about to have in your class. What do you know already about this student? How does their hearing loss impact them? What adaptations might you need to support them in the classroom? You may want to pause the video and note down your ideas or discuss these with colleagues if you're in a group. Considering the factors and potential impacts discussed, we're now going to think about what adaptations can be made to support a deaf student in the classroom. Hearing aids and cochlear implants aim to allow students to hear sounds across the speech frequencies. But unfortunately, the microphones pick up all sounds from around the user. Whether a deaf student wears technology or not, it is important to consider the acoustics of the learning environment, and this will benefit the other students also. The link to the Here to Learn videos at the end of this module has a useful simulation from what it is like for a deaf student in the classroom. At the moment, hopefully you can hear me clearly. I'm sitting in a quiet room with no background noise. Of course, this is rarely what a normal classroom sounds like. If I add typical classroom babble, my voice is a little harder to hear over the competing noise. Imagine adding noise from out in the corridor, the projector whirling, pens tapping on the table, and all this excessive noise masks any speech signals coming from the teacher, and it is also distracting. Deaf students need a greater difference between the level of teacher speech and the level of background noise in order to hear them effectively compared to other students with normal hearing. Reducing background noise as much as possible is essential. Part of this is using effective classroom, classroom management strategies with the students, encouraging a one person speaking at a time rule and setting an expectation of noise level when working in groups and when working individually. It is also important to consider other sources of noise, heaters, projectors and computers, turning these off when they're not needed, closing doors and windows when there are noises from outside the classroom. Adding soft furnishings, displays and blinds can help to reduce reverberation in the classroom. If a lot of noise is generated through the students scraping their stools on the floor in the science lab or moving pencil pots across the table, then putting soft pads underneath can help to combat this. It is useful for there to be a set quiet area for, that students can use in and out of the classroom, used for one-to-one -one work, group work with the teaching staff, a space to read and focus, or perhaps just a space to go to if they need to. Additional technology used effectively can significantly help the acoustics of a classroom and will be provided by the student's teacher of the deaf if appropriate for them. Please refer to the technology module for more information about radio aids and sound fields. Both involve the teacher wearing a microphone, which can also be used with other students when they are asking questions or sharing contributions. Module 3 included more information on supporting communication with deaf children and young people. Lip reading and facial cues are important to aid communication, whether the recipient is listening to spoken words or signing. It's important, therefore, that the student can clearly see the speaker's face, whether that be the teacher, TA or other students sharing contributions in a group. Gaining their attention before communicating so that they are aware you need to communicate with them and they can see your face. Deaf students can also find it harder to listen and do something at the same time, so if they are engrossed in play or writing notes during a lesson, they may need to stop and focus on you to benefit on what you're about to communicate. Speak clearly and at a normal pace. 
Shouting or speaking slowly will just distort your voice and your lip patterns, making you harder to understand. Try to stick to the key points when teaching and keep instructions short. It's easy for us teachers to do lots of talking, but for a deaf student it can be difficult to pick out the key information needed. Allow them time to process what is said before expecting a response. You may need to repeat or slightly rephrase the instruction. Visuals, which will come to you soon, can really help to aid their understanding. When working with deaf students, it is important to consider where to position yourself and them in the classroom. Here is a video with some key do's and don'ts. Most of these tips relate to the fact that deaf students find it easier to understand when they can clearly see the speaker's face and need to be, in, be close to the speaker for their hearing aids to work effectively. Make sure there is good lighting so that your face and the faces of other students can be clearly seen. Try to avoid putting your hands in front of your face. Avoid standing in front of a window as it will mean your face is in shadow. If you need to make the room dark for watching a video, try to give the main instructions beforehand or have a lamp angled towards your face. Try to stay in one position when you are teaching. Avoid walking and talking at the same time or turning to round to the board to write something while you are still talking. Deaf students in the classroom should be sat fairly close to the teacher, not at the back of the classroom. Between one to two metres is ideal, so that they can clearly see your face in any sign in use, but also that is in within optimal working distance for their hearing aids. So now we're going to think about using visual aids in the classroom. If I said the word dabity, do you know what that word means? You may not have heard me say the word correctly, or you may have automatically linked what I said to a word or phrase that you are more familiar with. If I display the word, you can read it yourself and check that you heard the sounds correctly. I could give you the definition, a Scottish word for small ornaments, and you can probably create a picture in your mind. But if you're a student that doesn't know what the word ornament means, then you've probably only taken from that that the word dabity is a small something. Put the picture next to the word and straight away we can understand what the word means. Using visuals in the classroom is a vital support method. Not only do they help students to understand new vocabulary, concepts and put meaning to words, but they help to give a context. They help to reduce auditory load when giving instructions. They make use of the deaf student's visual memory skills and reinforce key teaching points. Visuals can be used around the classroom in displays and learning maps to promote independence, or in pictured dictionaries or glossaries for topic-specific vocabulary. Visuals can include images, diagrams, symbols, objects and artefacts, and it's also handy to have an iPad nearby or a whiteboard for drawing on to illustrate what are wo the words that are bound to come up when you're not expecting. Some deaf students will need specific visual strategies to support them in their reading and writing, such as communicate and print symbols and shape coding. As important as visuals are, it is also important to use visuals wisely, as too many can become a distraction and cause visual overload. In addition to the points mentioned earlier, learning should be as multi-sensory as possible. Use concrete resources and ensure that the student understands fully before moving to the abstract. Teaching through real experiences helps to give purpose to the learning and make it more memorable. To help reduce fatigue, keep a good pace to the lesson with clear, concise instructions and teaching points and breaking up the structure of the lesson with tasks so that the student is not listening to or following a demonstration for long periods. Any task should be modelled clearly and this could be reinforced with visuals or key success criteria. Any vocabulary should be displayed for the student to refer back to and any other information that they may need. Check that the student has understood discreetly through use of open-ended questions. If you just ask them, do you understand, they're likely to say yes, 
whether they do or they don't. Tasks may need differentiating to ensure that they demonstrate their learning independently. This may include use of additional resources, instructions with simplified language or symbols, added visuals or initial guidance from a teaching assistant. It is, benefit, it is beneficial to have regular opportunities to recap previous learning through mini starters to lessons or morning tasks when they first come into school. This helps to reinforce and embed the learning into long-term memory. For some deaf students, they may need additional help to access their lessons through short pre-teaching sessions to fill in any gaps in their learning and introduce new concepts or vocabulary in the preparation for the lesson. Older students may also benefit from being supplied with key teaching notes, PowerPoints or a glossary from their subject teacher before a lesson so that they already know the context of what is going to be covered. They may need an opportunity to go over the learning in a different way after the lesson if they haven't fully understood. Most lessons include some form of ICT to help deliver the session through an interactive whiteboard and slides or using video clips, podcasts, sound clips to reinforce teaching points. You will need to consider how a student with a hearing loss can access these. So if they have a radio aid, this can be connected through an audio cable to the sound source, which will enable the sound to be delivered directly to the student's hearing aids. You could provide a transcript prior to playing the video that the student can read or display the subtitles. Although it is a good idea to check the accuracy of the subtitles beforehand. If notes need to be made during the clip, you may need to pause at points to allow this to happen, as listening and writing notes at the same time will be difficult. When using PowerPoint presentations, remember to look towards the students when speaking and stop when you turn to the board as mentioned earlier. Ensure your face is well lit. For any lessons that still involve some form of online group chat, keep your video on so that the student can see your face. And if you or the students are creating their own videos, it's worth using a captioning app such as Clips, AutoCap or Mix Captions which I used earlier for my video. Group work needs careful management to ensure the deaf student can participate fully. There needs to be clear rules for group discussions with noise levels kept to a minimum. Have a rule that only one person speaks at a time and if it's a larger group it helps for that student to identify themselves first so that the deaf student can locate where they need to focus their listening and see that person's face. If the student has a radio aid or sound field system in their class these can be used with the other students but they will need to be shown how to use them correctly. Arrange the students so that they can all be clearly seen. If there are lots of groups in the classroom, like in the picture, it's a good idea for the group the deaf student is in to go to a quieter area so that their group is not competing against the noise of the others. If another student is further away, they spoke quietly or their face wasn't clearly visible, it is worth repeating or rephrasing their contribution to ensure that the student heard correctly. These strategies also apply for whole class discussions or when sat on the carpet in early years and primary settings. Some deaf students will need more tailored support, perhaps to work on developing their vocabulary and their understanding of grammar and abstract language. They may need specific adaptations to the curriculum or to work on a parallel programme, such as in phonics. The student's teacher of the deaf can advise on and introduce specific strategies or programmes to support the student in school. The student may have a range of professionals involved and it is through good communication and working together, including working closely with the family, that the student's needs can be best met. It is also worth remembering where we started, with the child or young person in the centre. They should be involved as much as possible in giving their views on what helps them in the classroom and to develop their confidence to request changes when needed. The NDCS website has a wealth of information and support for professionals working with deaf children and young people. A link to some key publications is attached and they're here to learn videos that are useful to watch to better understand what it's like for deaf, a deaf student in the classroom and recap on tips covered in this module. You can also access additional help from teachers and TAs working with deaf students at the hearing impairment hubs in Peterborough 
at Middleton Primary School and St John Fisher Catholic High School. Thank you for listening. If you have any questions, please discuss these with your students, Teacher of the Deaf.